Brian, that's it. Here we go. Find me here. Crikey, we're going in. In a magical world called Okushala. Okay guys, we're here at Aquashella, all right? And one of the fun things that we do when we go to any trade show, we like meeting new people that really enjoy the hobby and they're here for all the right reasons. So I've got Keaton here and Keaton has just gotten into the hobby. What size tank do you have? Uh, 10 gallon. 10 gallon and it's also your birthday, is that right? Happy yes, birthday. Happy birthday, Keaton. You got a couple corals. What corals did you get today? Uh, I got Blastomusis torch and some zoas. And some zoas. Awesome. Can you tell everybody what they should be doing? Uh, they should definitely be subscribed to Tank It Easy on YouTube and Instagram. Turn on post notifications and keep up with all their videos. Drop a like down below. This guy right here, pay attention because he might be a new Tank It Easy guy in no time. He's got it down. Awesome, man. Well, happy birthday. Thanks for coming out. I did. You were super nice, though. Appreciate Thanks, that. Nice. Uh, Sean, get over here. Hey, guys. <laughs> it's Brian. Obviously, you know these two guys. We got Sean with Fritz and George, Mr. Coral Fish 12G. These guys are impressive. What a success. What a story. Everyone has been having such a good time. We are so honored to be here and really impressed with the amount of people and the good feedback of just how you guys keep improving it. We, we went around and we talked to all the artists and talked to a lot of the other vendors here. Uh, echoing the same things, so smiles all around if you haven't found this out already. Dude, what a nice guy. I love you. <laughs> you can back at I you. I love this guy. <laughs> Wait, was this snuggle with him? Well, we can snuggle later. Oh my gosh, this is getting naughty. Oh, yeah. So that's uh, okay, that's Aqua Shell after dark. <laughs> Jason Fox, you know him, you know his corals. Half the corals have Jason Fox in the coral as we're describing it. Uh, he's one of the must-see coral vendors at any show that you're at. So when you see Jason Fox, people literally run over to your booth. Why? Because you've got the hot colorful corals. Hot colorful corals. That's free and culture. Let me ask you this. What keeps you going? What keeps you coming back to these shows? I love the hobby. Right? And, and, I'm making a business out of it. Of course, thank you. I just have a passion. You love it. You've done a lot for us. Oh, yeah. We really appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate it. This is the Colorado, you ready for it? Colorado Sunburst. Right down here. You have to do like a top down because it's in this like precious box. This girl right here is so talented. So <laughs> talented. Please tell me about Bombshell Creation. I don't even know where to start. I know where to start. Right here is a great place to start. Yeah, so we started doing UVR, I don't know, almost a couple years ago now. Right. And I don't know, I fell in love with it. I've been in the salt water and I've, like, I've had a tank for almost seven years now. It's super challenging because UV paint is a very, uh, I guess, frustrating medium to work with. It's okay. so vibrant. And so the challenge is you're trying to paint one painting under white light right. and you're trying to paint another under black light. Right. And, you know, because the blue lights aren't always on. Sure. And so if your blue lights aren't on and the painting looks terrible, wow. yeah. it takes a lot for the painting. So it's constantly finding 
finding a balance between you know the regular light and the blue light. So you're Absolutely. doing two paintings at once. Last year in April, on April 20th, I woke up and the left side of my body was paralyzed when I was having a stroke. Oh my god. Yeah. And so I so I'm a registered nurse and I wasn't able to work because of my health problems. And I, you know, I spent a lot of time just laying in bed feeling sorry for myself. And I, you know, I'd always been an artist, and so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do something. I am going to, you know, do something that I love. And I was having like speech problems where I couldn't really talk, and so this is how I could talk. This is my language. Oh wow! So this painting was the first one that I picked up and said, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna challenge myself, and I'm gonna make something that I've never done before. That's awesome. And so. That's my baby. That's so cool. Yeah. So this is going on. You're not feeling great. You're kind of recovering, I'm assuming. Four weeks before we met in Chicago, I had just had heart surgery. Oh my like, gosh. I try to hide it, but you know, people didn't know that this was really going on. But right. like, I sometimes have a little gimp in my step, and I have to sit down and like out of breath. You know, like you know what it's like to have a passion about something. Where you're just like, I am going to, I am going to push myself, and I am going to like. All right, guys, we're here with Roger, the man, the myth, the legend. I learned so much from you in such a short period of time. Would you Over a couple beers. Over that a couple, was good. Two tree beers, as we yes, say in Chicago. Right. Uh, so he does service, he does retail, he does it all in Texas, am I right? Manufacturing, yes. Manufacturing. All that's in Texas. All right, so please tell my, tell my people a little bit more about what we got here. So, as we discussed over two, three beers, is we're heavy into fresh water. Always have been. It's been basically what has set the stage for what my successful company is knowing what our capabilities are, what we can deliver to the customer successfully. Because right. we're about creating relationships. If we don't have good relationships, and we don't have a good business plan. And so from very early on, I, I figured out that, look, I, there's nothing more important than that monthly service check coming in. So with that being in, in, in consideration, I wanted to go with something that I would be able to replicate successfully with staffing, which is always going to be a problem in any industry. It doesn't matter. People are always a problem. So with that all in mind, that's how we came about with a business model that's 100% driven on fresh water. All fresh water all the time. Joe. Turnout's crazy. Sold out actually, right? So, yeah. I don't know if I've ever been to an event where we've sold out completely. That's so, pretty good, right? Good news for the hobby too, right? We're happy to be right? sponsors here, right? Yeah, yeah it's good no news kidding. for everybody. Yeah, everybody's happy. So, well, except for the people that didn't get in the door, I'm assuming. Ooh, well, okay. That's why there's a day too, right? Hopefully they'll come back tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Katie Fogg. Hello. It's <laughs> just incredible. At your service. So these are some, some of the minds behind the artwork. So we wanted to take a little time, break from aquariums, break from all the stuff to see what is the cool stuff that people are putting around and above their fish tanks. Taking advantage of this cool UV light, reactive light and paint that they use. So tell us, please. Obviously, Aqua Shell is inspired by you know, New London and the extreme art scene that we have. In particular, I became very interested in the aspects of potential like chromatic 3D artwork. Uh, so the fluorescent paint really works really well with that. Right. Uh, especially when you light it up with UV or 465, 420 or, or right. blue or light. So I ended up coming across these really cool types of polarized glasses from a fellow over in London. And so me and Katie have been working on a lot of this 3D art. So we've actually been making the art with the glasses and then with the different types of blue and UV light to get these effects as we're making the art. So what, what this is, is uh, it's a local garnet magnetite sand. So Let's say that again for me. It's uh, garnet magnetite, garnet and magnetite. So magnetite is an iron oxide that has a, a uh, a charge to it, a magnetic charge. Right. Uh, so we in, in New England, we have a unique geological feature where uh, due to the erosion from glaciation, you know, after the last ice age, all there is this uh, layer of geology, the, the, the rock that got ground up, and then it's mostly um, garnet and magnetite. It's a very, very heavy sand. Right. So in the winter, we can collect it in these bands on right. certain private properties. It really doesn't take that much, and I can use that. It's all, it all has a, they all have dive holes. So then I'll kind of like 
sift it out, I'll dry it out, I'll try to get some of the extra silicon inclusions out of it, and then I'm able to charge that up with magnets and I create different arrays. Either I'll grow them up from the bottom or have them dripping down from the top or pull them out with magnet, you know, kind of cages, and then uh, add acrylic paint and uh, clear fixatives. Uh, and once they set up, they kind of interlock really, really strongly. Um, they could take anywhere from um, a few days to several weeks or a month for them to kind of grow and build up and lock in the shape. Every time I see them, they're doing something different. I got to be really entertained. Cool. Yeah. Tell them about your art. So I'll bring you over here. I took another level to acrylic paint. Um, so right here, you can see um, my layering technique with different acrylics. And I have been greatly educated through New York Academy of Art, getting my master's degree and learned all these different techniques and materials I could work with. So I was inspired uh, my first time by the aquatic world and more, mostly the coral reefs and their shapes and their iridescent colors. And so I took the time to build my own layering of different uh, transparent layers, opaque layers, um, so what's really cool is that this is going to definitely look different in a regular white light, but today it's represented here with the UV light and with the 3D glasses, so you'll see that the transparency will come forth to the viewer. And so I'll, ask, ask, um, I'll also add content to mine, meaning uh, for me with a holistic part of the art is also knowing that we're all connected. So I utilize the evil eye as my content for it. So if you see here, it's all kind of represented through different parts of the artwork, meaning that um, there's always gonna be protectors out there and there's always one out of many. Um, this part actually represents kind of like how we're all organisms and all part of one collective community here on this beautiful earth. And so it's been really nice to connect myself with a different field such as the aquatic world. So, thank you. Look what we have here. Keep on reefing! Hey friends! What do you got to? What do we got you're going not, on? Get a, you're not going to get out of it. Oh. Wait, take two. Take two. Take Hey, Ladies and gentlemen, boys wanted. and girls of all ages, we have Scott Crow. Keep on reaping! Woo! So there it is, there it is. <laughs> Thanks. We're at the Waterbox booth, okay? If you haven't heard about them, you should know them by now. They have some really awesome tanks, well priced. The whole units are pretty fantastic. I know Scott believes in them. Take It Easy uses them as well. We have not one, but two of them in our booth. And we thought, hey, they're here. Let's go talk to them. So, Scotty, Tell us who we got over here. Please come on in here. Rich, yeah. you gotta come on in here. That's right. That's right. Max out. Max out, baby. Rich. <laughs> uh, what actually, let's, let's, let's talk water box, baby. Here, water right. yes. box. Water box. The man, the myth, the legend. You, yeah, you so taken... guys, here at the show, we're debuting our clear line for the first time, which Clearly. is fresh water. We got our peninsula on display. We got the plus editions. Uh, we got the AI booth over here as well, right. joining up with us. Uh, with the Nero's on display. We're going live. We're posting all over the place. These guys are editing video as we speak. So, awesome. great show, great attendance. We're psyched. Why do you, out of curious, for you as a like, retailer and I don't know if you have a service company and so how do you like it? So, what, we love Waterbox. We like it a lot. Um, what I like is we do a lot of custom stuff where we try to incorporate Waterbox in. What I love is it's like the plug and play type of thing. For people that can't wait and they want it right now, and they've already seen something that they like, we kind of direct them more into a complete package for a multitude of reasons for our clients. They have condos, like people have space where it just fits really nice. Um, when they don't want to have to be too matchy-matchy or have something that is direct uh, match to their dining room set or their, you know, uh, or even like their, or the den, however that goes, or even the office, this is actually a really nice option for the office. Uh, but any of these people that have this, I'm working with designers, they want something sleek. They want something that is a little more modern looking and they are all about being able to look down into the tank. So for that, Waterbox has all those things checked and you guys have been incredible to work with as far as shipping. Right, right. Getting me the product when I need it. Because the hardest thing to do is try to tell somebody, hey, you saw something online that you love, but I can't get it in time. I can't, right. I can't make that deadline. So Waterbox has made the shipping for me, a retailer and a service guy or just all around, I don't recommend anything that I can't use myself. Sure. Waterbox has been super solid at that and if I've had any issues whatsoever, they are responsive. Naturally, 
this bass can be damaged, so that's one of the things early on we decided if someone has an issue, we take care of it right away, no questions asked. When you see something great, you gotta call it out. So keep that in mind. Uh, leave your comments below about these guys. I'm sure they're gonna be checking in. I will put a link below to them as well. Also Scott Crow, OSA, got some really great content. <laughs> I've been on his, his program more than a couple times. It's always fun. And whenever there's a Thursday night and I'm available, I'm trying to yeah, chime in, get and, me in there. and see what's going on. Not even that, just to, like you're learning. Jewels of the Sea. Their Instagram now is Jewels of the Sea Art. Jewels of Jewels of the Sea art on Instagram. You need to follow them because they've got some insane artwork that I really appreciate. So you take it easy fans out there, check out this stuff. Hey everyone, what's up? Reed here, take it easy. Just wanted to say thanks to everyone for coming out. Scott Crow, love you buddy. Just trying to max some of that energy. All right, boys and girls, we just finished up day one, Aquashella. Aquashella. Aquashella was a blast. We had, what was the turnout? About just under 4,000 people? Yeah, we can take it to the end of the night. Take it easy and we're doing it right. in the books, Dallas. Holy cow, Aquashella Dallas 2.0. Fantastic, what an event. There was so much to see and so much to cover. Let me just say this, we had a blast. Take it easy, so grateful that we got to make the trip. I gotta tip my hat off to George and Sean. Heck of a show. If you knew anybody in the fish world, you knew that this place was jam-packed today. Did you know the fire marshal had to shut it down? Over 3,500 people came out to Dallas to watch an amazing show take place. Aquashella 2.0 is a great success, and that's only day one. Day two is coming tomorrow, and we're pumped. We just cannot wait to get up and do it all again. Please like, subscribe, follow us, follow everybody. But guess what? We'll be here. <laughs>